The final feature we will look at is the recorder, which allows you to record a time lapse. I'll use an 8x10 inch canvas. You may need to extend this panel vertically to see all the options. In this panel, there are two buttons near the bottom. The first will start and stop the recording. Before you record, be sure to set up your record settings above. This will control the speed, size, and quality of your video. First, choose the directory where you want the captured image frames to go. There is a shortcut to open this folder. The capture interval will control the speed. A smaller value will record more frames or more brush strokes, making the video longer and more detailed. A larger value will record fewer frames, making the video shorter and may miss some steps. When choosing a value, keep in mind that when you export your video, you'll need to select the frame rate, which is set to 30 by default, but can be higher. 60 frames per second will give you smoother movement, but will also make the video duration shorter and the file size larger. Divide the capture interval by the number of frames per second, and that will give you the duration of your video. So for example, if I paint for 90 seconds at one frame per second, I will have generated 90 frames. At a frame rate of 30 frames per second, that would only be three seconds of video. The format controls the quality and file size of the recorded images. PNG will give you better quality, but will require more storage space on your computer. JPEG can be useful if quality is not a concern and smaller file size is preferred. In either case, you can choose the quality and compression values. And finally, resolution controls the video dimensions. This is linked to the size of your document, so if you want to capture maximum quality, choose original. You can also choose a smaller size if you want a smaller video. For example, if I only require a 1080p video, I might be able to have the resolution to save storage space. I'll click the record button to initiate the recording. It's important to note that only the canvas will be captured, not the UI or cursor. If you want to capture that stuff, you'll need something like OBS Studio, which is free. Next, I'll stop the recording, then click on export. First things first, if FFmpeg is missing, you aren't going to get very far. You'll need to install that and link to the FFmpeg exe file. This is what turns your captured frames into a watchable video. FPS can be 30 or 60. If you want to speed up or slow down the rate of your video, you can make these values different. For example, 6030 will make the video twice as fast. You can also show a still preview at the beginning or end of the video. The video dimensions can be resized. You can stretch the video, but that will add block space around your canvas. In this case, if I want to make a 1080p video, then I can make the width 1920 and the height 1080 pixels. If you will be primarily recording your screen for posting it to YouTube, you may want to start with a canvas size that matches the video dimensions so there isn't any black space added to the edges when you export the video. Under Render As, choose H.264 since it will be the most compatible with other applications. The video location setting controls where the exported video will go. You can see at the bottom of this panel what the output video duration will be. Again, you can adjust the input FPS to change the video length. Click Export. And after the video has been rendered, you can watch it. Whatever you capture in your recordings is stored as snapshots, so you'll want to clear those out after rendering the video if you no longer need them. Otherwise, they eat up space on your computer. 